How do you know if you're a nerd? Well, I'll tell you. I'm in Hawaii right now and I've spent a good part of my day today working on software. And uh, my wife will be joining me next week. Let's go ahead and cue the montage. Again, I'm recording this actually before my wife arrives, so what you just saw is um, video that I recorded after what I'm recording right now. Uh, but in the meantime, I have some free evenings and I thought that I would work a little bit on a video about software for uh, the angle of tax sensor. Try to make this as easy as possible so that you guys can see uh, exactly what's required to be able to get the software downloaded and able to be used uh, on your devices. Let me just switch really quickly over to my uh, computer over here. I have a brand new installation of Windows. Um, the first thing we'll do is open up um, Chrome. I noticed this is funny with a brand new installation of Windows. Um, I noticed that um, if I use Edge, um, GitHub doesn't look right on there. If you're not familiar with what GitHub is, it's a repository for developers where you can uh, drop your code. You can create uh, branches of your code to do development on it. Uh, and then you can uh, merge that code in with your existing code that's already there. Most people use this for when they're creating new um, versions of their software, uh, fixing bugs and that kind of thing. It's a really great piece of software. Um, and so I have a GitHub account and where I'm posting all of the uh, software and other things. You can use it for not just software. Um, so for example, uh, looking at my page here, you can see up here in the top uh, left here, these are the different repositories that I have on my GitHub. Um, one of which is uh, the Angle of Attack 3D models. It's actually an empty repository right now. Um, there's the Android uh, application that's here. Uh, this is specifically meant for if you are an Android developer, um, all of the code, uh, the source code is actually in here. You can go in and you know branch off and do, if it doesn't do what you want it to do, you can make it do other things. Um, this section right here, it says uh, AOA Android APKs. Uh, an APK, if you're not familiar with that, is an Android package. Uh, it's a, basically a single file that an entire app can be installed from. Um, I've already uh, exported out um, an APK here, um, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, also, you can see here it's the uh, Arduino code, the, the code that's uh, running on the microcontroller that's inside of the sensor itself. Um, and then down here below this is the uh, AOA wiring schematic. So if I click on this, for example, um, it'll pull up um, some information about this. Um, there's what's called a readme file. Every one of these repositories has a readme file. It's just a, a git thing that you can do. Um, in this case, it's just saying what's, what's in this repository. Obviously, there's the disclaimer there. It's on all of these. Um, if you want to see what the wiring diagram looks like, you can just click here where it says AOA wiring diagram.pdf. And when you open that, should open up a PDF file and you can see a copy of that. If that gets updated at some point, uh, I'll overwrite this file and it'll have the updated version of it. So you're always, as long as you're always pulling from the main branch, which if you look here, you can change the different branches. In this case, there's only a branch, a main branch for the wiring diagram. Um, if I were to go back to, for example, the Arduino one here, if I were to switch, there's actually two branches. There's a main and there's a turn coordinator one. At this point, the, the turn coordinator um, branch has actually been merged into the main branch. Um, so if you look at it, sort of like, uh, imagine it's sort of like a tree um, that has branches coming out of it. You have a main trunk um, where most of your code's gonna go. That's gonna be your main branch. Um, and then if you want to do some kind of an update to your code, you'd branch off. So you basically, your code would still stay here and then you'd branch off, write some additional code, and eventually those will get merged back in together again, um, and it will overwrite the original code. Um, so 
The only thing that you're going to care about probably is the main branch. I wouldn't mess around with any of these other branches that are sitting out there. Um, they're mostly just for me to write um, in a safe place where I'm not going to mess anything up and I only check in my code when it actually compiles and works. So in this case uh, we're looking at the uh, the Arduino code. Again if we click here on this folder that says angle of attack sensor 1 and then if you click here this is actually the code that comes up. Uh, this is the code that you would actually install on the Arduino. You see it's got several hundred lines um, 612 lines of code um, to make the Arduino do the things that it's meant to do. Uh, so probably the easiest way to get this started here, let's go back to the Danderflieger, the top end here. Let's start with the uh, APK. This is probably the one that most people are going to be interested in seeing to start. Um, so if I click on Android APKs, you can see here there's an AOA Android APK file. And if I click on this, I can actually download this file by clicking on this download button right here. You can see that it's uh, gone into probably my downloads folder here, which it has. All right, um, next I'm going to plug in my tablet. Okay, you can see that the Galaxy Tab A popped up here. Um, and we can just grab either, doesn't matter, it has a, an SD card in it, it also has a tablet in it, it doesn't matter where you copy that file that we just downloaded to. Uh, so I'm just going to open up another window here. And I'm going to go to my s downloads folder. What I'm going to do is go ahead and open up on the tablet. I'm going to just open up the uh, regular hard drive, go to downloads. I'm just going to copy and paste this right into this location here on my tablet. All right. All right, now that I have the uh, APK copied over to the uh, tablet, let me go ahead and open it up using uh, File Explorer. Um, if I go to my local and downloads folder here, we can see that I have the APK uh, copied over. If I just tap this. Uh, first thing it's going to ask is if I really want to install it. Um, it says it doesn't need any special uh, access, uh, which it actually does. Um, Bluetooth, um, Bluetooth applications actually require location services to run. Um, in a minute it's going to ask me if I want to allow that. Um, this is a really old tablet, so it, I'm actually kind of surprised that it runs on here. Uh, if you have a newer Android uh, operating system, the, the prompt for that looks a little bit different. So I'll go ahead and let this run. It takes a few minutes for some reason to install. I'm not sure if it's just my laptop's really slow or, or my tablet's really slow or what. Okay, so this uh, it's going to say basically you're trying to sideload something. This hasn't been uh, put into the uh, Android Play Store, which it hasn't. Uh, we're, we're, we're doing what's called a sideload. Um, basically, you can install a, any APK that you choose. You can do it without having to go through a store. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say install anyway because I know it and I trust the app. I was the one that wrote the code for it, so I feel comfortable with it. Uh, and this does take a, a few minutes to install, um, so I'm just going to fast forward ahead here and uh, we'll, we'll jump back in once this is installed. Okay, it says the app is installed. Um, I'll go ahead and hit done here. If I go back to my home page and then swipe up. I can see the angle of attack indicator software. I can open it. And this is where it's going to ask you if you're willing to give it permission to uh, access location. Again, uh, you can deny it if you want to, but Bluetooth doesn't work without location services, so you have to turn it on. Uh, click o Allow. Um, and then the disclaimer's there. Um, hit Agree. Um, and then we can start scanning. Um, let me turn on my device over here found it, hit stop, so it's no longer scanning, and you'll notice that when I do that, this when I start scanning, the um, connect button goes away. When I hit stop scanning, it appears again. Um, if there was more than one of these devices here, you can click on this and you can see um, that there would be a list of them. Uh, there's another place in here where you can see a, a better example of this. I've only got one of uh, these devices with me right now. Um, so I'm just going to say connect. It takes you uh, automatically into the aircraft page, so you can go back and forth between the sensor and the aircraft page. 
Um, because I don't have an aircraft selected right now, we don't have any in the database, uh, if I try to click on the indicator button here, you'll notice down here in the bottom um, that it'll come up with what's called toast message, uh, and it says there's no aircraft selected, and the reason is because there are no aircraft to select. Uh, so what you can do is you can actually add a a new uh, aircraft ID. In this case, we'll call it November one two three four, and then click the add button here. And you'll notice up here at the top now there is a November one two three four aircraft. Uh, if I wanted to cr uh, add another one, let's go November four three two one. Hit add. You see, there's another toast at the bottom that says that it's been added. Uh, if we click up here now, we can select between either of those two aircraft. Um, so let's go ahead and go with 4321 now. Um, hit the back button to get rid of the keyboard here. Um, you'll notice that uh, I'm, I have the 4321 selected. If I hit the delete button here, it doesn't go away. So there is a way to get rid of either of these. Um, let's get rid of the 4321. What you have to do is click up here where it says edit, sla edit save and then hit the delete button. And it's going to prompt you and say that you have to enter an aircraft ID. This is just a safety measure to make sure you're not deleting it accidentally while in flight or something like that. Maybe you, you hit a little bit of turbulence and your hand bounces and accidentally hits the uh, delete button when you're meaning to hit a different button up above. Uh, so in order to make sure that you don't delete it accidentally, you actually have to type in the uh, tail number that you want to get rid of. So November 4321. And then if I hit delete now, You'll notice that the top part up here changed and there's only one aircraft left. The 4321 is now gone. Uh, so at this point, this is just basically a bare bones aircraft. There's nothing uh, set for it right now. Um, so if I want to, for example, um, let's see our, set my little um, wind vane here to something kind of realistic, maybe do it to, I don't know, 6.9 degrees or something like that. If I hit set current, it's gonna automatically place the number 6.9 inside of there, which it just got from up here above. Um, if my descent angle, I usually do about three degrees for that, so let's put a th negative three. Um, I'll do the same thing for my warning angle. I'll make this maybe 10 or something like that. And make my danger angle, this is uh, where your wing would actually stall, I'll make it 16 degrees be negative. Uh, and I've th made some updates to the software at this point as well, so this might be exciting for you or not. Um, uh, I'll show you what this is in a second, but there's a turn rate. Um, the, the Arduino device that's inside of that we are using, um, either the Arduino Nano 3.3 IoT or the Arduino Nano 3.3 BLE, both of them have a suite of sensors within them. The important one is what's called an inertial measuring unit. Uh, it has a, an accelerometer as well as a gyroscope built into it. Um, a three axis for those, uh, either one of those. Um, and if you get the BLE, it actually has a, a magnetometer in it as well. Um, probably isn't going to work, uh, mostly because we have the, uh, you know, the sensor is run by magnets moving around. It's going to probably throw off your magnetometer, so um, I didn't bother doing anything with that. Um, but I did use the gyroscope and the, the uh, accelerometer um, to, to get some more data um, on our app, and I'll show you that here in a second. Um, but you can see up here at the top, um, right now it's flashing between, the current turn rate is flashing between 2 and negative 2 and negative 2.1. Um, basically, that is the, that's the gyroscope. It's saying that it's turning, it thinks it's turning at about 2 degrees per second to the left. Um, so what we'll do is hit our button down here that says set current next to the turn rate offset and it'll take that number whatever it is when I push it and it will make that the uh, ze basically zero out our turn rate offset um, and then the ball reading multiplier um, this is I basically put this in um, just for testing I haven't figured out what the right number is for this yet it looked like around 500 was about right for when I was flying it kind of matched up pretty closely with my actual ball indicator uh, all right, and then if we hit edit save, that actually saves it out to the database. Um, so that the next time we open this, it'll be there waiting for us. 
And if I go to my indicator now, uh, you'll see that I can actually turn the uh, wind vane and it'll go up and down. Nose down. Give us a little audio to tell us that it's not happy. And if I turn it slowly from one side to the other, you'll see that that skid and slip indicator moves back and forth. And if I tip the device on its side, you can see that the ball moves back and forth. Uh, I see I've just found a bug. Um, when I do this on my phone, it actually stops right there at the edge of the, uh, the ball, um, like right there. All right, so the next thing we're gonna to wanna to talk about is the Arduino device. Uh, the Arduino is the microcontroller that sits inside of the sensor. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is um, we're gonna open another tab here and we're gonna to go to arduino.cc. And what we are interested in, um, you can buy the hardware from here, you can buy the, uh, the Android, uh, I'm sorry, the Arduino devices, in this case, um, a Arduino Nano uh, 33 IoT is probably the best choice, or a Arduino Nano 33 BLE. Um, either one of those works with the code, but in order to get the software, um, the code that I've written onto the Arduino device, you need to use another piece of software called an IDE. Um, an IDE, uh, I'm not sure what that acronym stands for, I'll put it up on the screen here someplace. Um, it, basically an IDE is a piece of software uh, that allows you to write other software and then you can use uh, the same IDE software um, to actually copy the code over to your device. Um, so what we're going to do is go to this web page arduino.cc and then click on the software button here um, and then in this case uh, depending on what your operating system is on your computer if you have a Mac you know you would click on the Mac OS obviously um, in this case, I have a Windows. This is actually a VM that's running over a Linux machine. Um, I'm a Linux guy, so um, if I were doing this on my Linux computer, I would actually um, probably use apt to, to install it, honestly. I probably wouldn't download it from here. Um, but I could, I could download the app image here and run it directly from my Linux computer. Um, in this case, I'm running a virtual machine over the top of my Linux computer just to kind of show you what it looks like if it's Windows. Um, in this case, I would click on Win 10 and newer 64 bits. If I want to do a full install, you can do an MSI installer if you prefer that. Um, and if you don't want to install it, the whole thing at all, you can actually just do a zip file and unzip it, and it's got an executable in there that you can run instead. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and click on this, and we will download the installer. Um, you can certainly uh, donate if you like. In this case, I'm just going to click just download for this time. Um, and you'll notice that uh, this uh, executable is downloading. It says Arduino IDE 2.0.0. Once it's installed, I'll go ahead and run it. Say run. And I will say I agree. Um, I'll say anyone who runs this computer and I will say yes, and I agree. Uh, that looks like a good spot for it. This does take a few minutes to uh, install. All right, uh, looks like it's completed. We'll go ahead and run the Arduino IDE. So I have all of the software installed on my Linux computer. Actually, I haven't tried this on uh, my Windows computer here. Um, I know that there are several um, additional libraries that we need to install to be able to run. So we'll go ahead and say yes, it's installing some additional uh, things here. Say yes to this, this allows you to plug in a uh, 
USB device um, to plug in the Arduino device as a USB uh, peripheral. So say install. It's also uh, a good idea to leave this checked where it says always trust software. Um, just Otherwise it may ask you to say yes each time you install a new part here. Um, so go ahead and say install again. Uh, go ahead and say install again. And again. Yes. So right now it's going through and downloading other libraries. You can see it's installing Servo and Stepper. These are all different types of motors that you can uh, install. Keyboard and mouse libraries, um, all kinds of different things. So I'm going to go ahead and plug uh, my USB device in here. Let's see if this enumerates or not. It's actually my Linux computer popping up a question here. So I'm not sure which one of these it is. We'll try COM6 and see what happens. So I'll try to find Arduino Nano 3.3 IoT, which is what we have here. Or a BLE. Um, so it's saying that this is, if you hover over it, hit OK. It's going to prompt you down here and ask you to install. It has to be installed for the currently selected Arduino Nano 3.3 IoT board. Do you want to install it now? I say yes. Why not? It's actually the first time I've done it this way with this newer uh, version of the IDE. Um, these things again so uh, you can once once it's installed all those uh, libraries that it knows how to communicate with each of these boards. Uh, if you click on the tools menu here, um, you can see which board we've collected uh, selected here. Um, if you happen to have uh, a Nano uh, BLE, we're going to probably have to go to Boards Manager here and try to find a BLE. So you can actually install it right from here. Um, it says it's deprecated though, I'm not sure. I guess this is the one you want to choose, the one above it. Arduino Embed OS Nano Boards by Arduino. And you'll want to install it here. Um, I'll install it just because it doesn't hurt to do it. Um, I'm, I do have a BLE board. Um, in this case, I'm, I'm using the uh, IoT and the one that I have here with me in Hawaii. So um, that's the one I'm going to use. But once it installs the BLE board here, um, we'll just ignore it and uh, use the IoT one anyway. Okay, so if I were to go up here, I can say let's select our boards. Um, and then here we would select the Arduino Nano 3.3 BLE. Um, in this case, we're going to continue with the Arduino Nano 3.3 IoT, which is the board that I have in there. 
All right, so probably the next most important thing to do uh, before we download these files is to go and find uh, git Um, so if we go to go to this git guides install git, it'll tell you how to install it. Uh, there are several different uh, versions of it. So you want to navigate to the git for Windows installer, which will work just fine. And we'll say download. And then we'll run this application. And what this does is it actually installs a piece of software that interfaces with GitHub to make it really easy to uh, download this code and keep it up to date. So we're going to go ahead and install it here. That's fine. Uh, that's fine. Looks good. I'll just use notepad as git's default editor. Doesn't really matter too much. Just kind of clicking on all of these. It's been a while since I've done this for Windows, so. Uh, hopefully this works <laughs> when we're done here. Uh, Open SSL is fine. Windows style sounds good to me. I'm going to use the Windows default console window, which is just your uh, command prompt, as opposed to installing a different TTY client. Don't think we need that. Um, Default's probably fine here. You're just going to be pulling code as opposed to pushing it anyway, so this is what's important here. None for now. Okay, now that we have git installed, I'm going to use a command line to pull the code that uh, we want to pull down from the internet here. Um, so the first thing I'll do is, like I said, type cmd down here in the, in the search window and then hit enter. That opens up a command prompt. From here I'll type cd, which means change directory. So I'm going from c, users, dan. I'm going to change directory into another directory within the dan directory, which is going to be called downloads. Okay, and there's nothing in there right now. Uh, and I could actually put this file anywhere I wanted to. So actually, let's let's put this under. So I'll go dot dot, which means go up a directory, and then documents instead. Okay, there's nothing in the documents folder right now. That's what the dir command here that I just typed is it's to list the what's inside of there. Now if I go back to my window here and I go back to my GitHub. If I go to AUA Arduino, and right here I click on code, and then I can just click on this copy button right here. And if I go back here, I can say, while I'm in the directory I want it to go into, I would say git clone, and then control shift V, oops, control V. Um, in Linux it's control shift, um, in Windows apparently it's control V. Uh, so I hit control V and that's going to paste in that link that I just gave it, that I just copied. If I hit enter, it's now cloning uh, that directory into here. So if I do another dir, I should see uh, an AOA Arduino folder. Hit it again and hit dir. And now you can see this angle of attack sensor 1.0 is the actual uh, INO file. The uh, the Arduino code. All right, so let's get out of this and we'll open up Arduino, Arduino IDE here. OK. 
Okay, then I'm going to go File, Open, under Documents, AUA Arduino, Angle of Attack Sensor 1, Angle of Attack Sensor 1. This will open up a new window, and here's all of the code within. Uh, there's a lot of good information in here if you're interested in how it works. Um, I try to write a lot of comments in my code, um, mostly for myself because I have a pretty crappy memory. Um, to figure out why I, I did something the way I did, um, I'll usually write a lot of code in here, or a lot of comments um, in the Arduino uh, code block here. Anything that starts with slash star star that begins a comment, basically it's ignored by the compiler when it runs. Um, and then when you get to another spot where it ends with um, star star slash, so right here, um, everything between those two uh, is actually commented out and the Arduino IDE doesn't actually do anything with it, it just kind of skips over it. Uh, so you can see it better here probably where it says slash star star and then whatever is in between and then star star slash. Um, there's another way to do comments as well, and that's just two forward slashes if you want to do a partial line instead of doing it all like that. Uh, either way is acceptable, it doesn't matter. Um, feel free to read through this, there's a lot of good information in here. Obviously, um, some of it has to do with the licensing, it's open source. Um, I, always, I also use this library that you'll have to download at some point here before we get too far in um, and install that. I am going to try and just compile this and run it just to see what happens here. So what I'm going to do is click on select board and select Arduino Nano 3.3 IoT on COM6, which it recognizes is there. And then there's a couple of buttons up here. Um, if I hit the, the verify button, it's going to actually try to compile the code and it's probably going to come up with errors because I don't think it's going to know uh, where this uh, seed Arduino AS5 5600 library is. Uh, like I said, we're going to have to install that separately. Um, so I'm going to try and compile and see what happens. And immediately it comes up with an issue here. I'm not really seeing. So it's complaining about not being able to find Arduino BLE. So that's going to be the first library we need to install. So we're going to go here, manage libraries, and we're going to have to find Arduino BLE. Um, and so we'll want to install this, the first one here, not the first one, but the second one here. It says Arduino BLE by Arduino. Hit install. And so we've just installed a library from the library manager. Let's try and do this again and see if we get the same error or a different one. Okay, so this time it, it got past that. It's installed or it's included the Arduino BLE library. It's included the wire.h library. And now it's getting stuck on the AS5600H library. All right, so we're going to have to do this manually. So what we'll do is we'll just highlight this bit in the code here. Copy. And we'll paste that into our address bar here. All right, and then here we'll say code download zip. This will include all of these files in here in a single zip file. And it has now downloaded that into the downloads folder. Seed Arduino AS5600 master. And then we're gonna go here. We don't need two Arduino code windows open here. There we go. Uh, so we'll go to sketch, include library, 
and then add zip library. And we're going to go to our downloads folder and we'll click on this file that we just downloaded and hit open. And then we've now successfully installed library seed, whatever it's called. Um, and now if we try to run this, it should get beyond this line. Now it's complaining about the LSMD6DS3, whatever that is. So now we'll do another search for that. So that's uh, the Arduino. Uh, we're talking about the IMU that's uh, built into that into the uh, Arduino Nano um, BLE or uh, IoT. Um, either one of those will run with the LSM 6DS3. Um, so we'll go ahead and install this as well. Okay, and then we'll try to verify this one. It's looking better. All right, so that did compile. We didn't see any more errors. Um, and now if we want to push it to the Arduino, we can just click on Upload right here. So it's going to compile again, which we just did, and now it's actually uploading it. Okay. Um, let me just turn on my app here really quick and take a look and see it did pick it up and I see data coming across so seems to be working great um, so just with those two things um, we should be able to uh, compile and install the Arduino code and install the APK um, from my GitHub repository. Uh, it took a little while to figure out uh, how to do this on Windows again. It's been a while since I've done it. Um, hopefully it's uh, been helpful for you. Um, so feel free to subscribe, uh, click the like button, add comments if you have questions about things. Um, again, this is a piece of open source, open source software, so I'm not really uh, I'm not supporting it really, uh, other than you know if somebody has a good idea feel free to uh, you know shoot me a comment and say hey why don't you do this instead um, another thing that you can do if you do run into errors uh, if you go to the github repository if there are issues uh, you can actually create an issue uh, by clicking here on this issue button um, and you can create a new issue uh, I don't guarantee that I'm gonna actually fix anything that's there but uh, if it's something that seems like it is an issue I'll go in and, and fix it um, so feel free to add an issue. Hopefully uh, this has been helpful for you. I appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos um, and uh, hopefully it's helpful for you. Take it easy.